That went better than I was expecting it to. We're dreaming here and that's the dream. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. It is a beautiful, bitterly cold morning here in sunny Leicestershire and I'm actually gonna do exactly what I said I was gonna do last week, which is make that gate last three videos because I'm just going to put the hinges in it, but you might actually notice that, well, I haven't painted it. The reason why I haven't painted it is because it is like minus two every single day right now. So we've got loads of odds and sods jobs we need to do. And the paint is just not going to take it to that gate whatsoever. So we've got to sheet it, get it hung so we can get the balls in. We've got to sort some heifers out, PD in later in the week, which won't be in this video, it'll be in another video. Firstly, I need to get the hinges in that gate, which dad has told me are on the bench somewhere. Here they are, look, in blue, spare X, courtesy of Mr. Colin Catley. I didn't realize they were going to be in bags. So I was looking for everything. Actually, they're black. It looked black. Maybe it's just the colour. I don't know. We'll get them out and have a look. Turns out they're not black. They're like a self colour, so you can paint them. I've never seen any hinges like that before. Normally they're galvanised or something like that, but yeah, it's different. Right, I've got to go find the sheet to put on the back of this and screw it on. Dad said something about it being in the shed over there. So I don't know. We'll go look for it. Right, I can't seem to find that anywhere. Dad's in a meeting, so rather than disturb him, there's some pre-mixing need doing, and we'll just find it when he gets back out. Pre-mixes all the, you might have noticed we've got two piles now because we've got the finishing ration over here. We've actually made a growing ration just there, which we've started feeding to the heifers. Now I did say that we weren't going to feed the heifers anything other than red clover silage, but we've had a bit of a rethink because the heifers are doing so well that if we give them that pre-mix as well as their silage, they should be off farm May-ish, which would free us up to have more grazing to have more cows. So it kind of makes sense to try and get rid of all the spare heifers because we like 50 odd head not having to be fed. What we're gonna have to do at some point is take the Charolais out of here, leaving just the stabilizer replacements because the stabilizers don't want the supplementary feed. The Charolais then can go in the other shed and they can get fed up there. And as well, it would save us having to drive along here with the bucket because it's an absolute pain because the ground's uneven and we're worried about taking the sheets down. <laughs>
I've, uh, I've made the bolt a little bit too long so just having to angle grind it off but better being too long than too short because you can't do nothing about that so next job now I've got the bull pen on is to actually get the bulls in we managed to get Wizard and Yeti first thing this morning so they stood at the gate just there and we let them in and managed to trap them in one of the pens We've just got the three Charolais balls out. These are all going to go in various different pens. So we're going to try and take them one at a time, but I'm not sure how successful that's going to be. It's worth a try, I think, because they're right next to the gate. The first up is 007. Well, that wasn't too painful. So all we've got left now is Paul and Lewis. Lewis is always going to be the hard one because Lewis just thinks he's king of the castle. Ideally, Paul will come in because um, he's kind of the next one along the pens and then we'll get Lewis last right well that's gone well as well all we've got left now is Lewis and he's the one that's going to pose any kind of trouble but he's right by the gate now so hopefully he'll just walk in he's a big lad isn't he Jesus. you're going to have to go back you're going to have to go back your head's too big tell you what that went better than I was expecting it to I thought we'd be running around that field all afternoon trying to get them in. I just felt like they weren't going to come, but they must be super ready to come in now. We've got like 007 in his own pen at the end. We've put Paul in with the young one because Paul's like dead chill and I didn't think he'd bother the young one. Lewis is on his own because Lewis is just a bit of an ass. He was the one that broke this gate, so hopefully he won't break another one. And then we put the two stabilizers, Wizard and Yeti, in together because they were in together last year. They're like best mates. They spend all the time together in the field and everything. That's it. They were the last ones to get in out of the field. So everything's in. One thing I will say, those Charolais though, just like their feet are terrible. I really need to get the foot trimmer out and have a look at them because they're just all, the, some of them are big and they're a bit lame. There's one thing I just dislike about the Charolais, they're good balls and like good terminal sires, but their feet are shocking because they've got white pigment in their feet they just grow so big you have to keep trimming them they get lame you have to worry about them getting lame when they're out working in the summer which is just something you don't want to have to worry about the stabilizers they got dark pigment in the feet then things are perfect like they never need trimming or sorting out they've got great feet but yeah, there's charolais the charolais society really needs to sort feet out because it's a major issue well it started raining now but next job we've got is we've got to stack these bale trailers so we always stack one on top of the other when dad had these made he had them made so that you can lift that one and drive that one underneath and then we stack all the kit on top of it so that we can take up a lot less room in the sheds because we're not overdone for room that's just going to put the 6.6 on the one trailer to back underneath i'm getting the 125 with the pallet signs on we've got pallet signs on the telehandler and we're going to lift them up it's always a bit hair raising but it's a good bit of fun nonetheless Staying well clear of that now, but Dad's just gonna back this one underneath. And then we can drop that one back on top. You just put the handbrake on and it'll just sit there. Good idea actually, he had. Just had to miss out some of the little loops, some of the hooks for putting, you know, ratchet straps on. Now to drop it back down. Dad's just going to go and get a bit of gravel because there's a few holes on the bottom there. Now, we haven't really got any rats because we're always dead keen on rat bait in the bales. You never see any rats about. But whilst the trailers and all the kit is out, we're going to go along and just put some gravel in and fill them holes in. Stop anything undermining the concrete on the cows the other side. But once that's away, I think all I've got left to do is clean my rake down at some point. I've got to put the hedge cutter back on because it's about time to start doing a bit of hedge cutting, even though it's so wet outside. And then I think I think we're getting there for winter jobs. Things stuff's getting pretty much put away, which is kind of nice. I like to have everything away for Christmas if we can, because 
I just after Christmas, it just seems to be like, well, you feel like you're closer to getting it back out again. Want to get rid of that dryer as well. We don't use a grain dryer. That thing can go. Anyone's interested in a Ventacrop grain dryer? You can have it. Well, no, you can't have it. You got to buy it. Oh, and there's an old roller mill here as well. This roller mill works. We put a bigger one in, but that one still works. If you want a roller mill for grain, hit me up. The one we put in is like three and a half ton. That one was smaller. So yeah, that's there if people are interested. So we put a bit of stone in along that side and we've just done this little bit here in front of the sheds because there's a bit of a drop off there and it was a pain when you were coming to do anything in there or back a trailer or anywhere. If you couldn't see, it wasn't smooth. So we did that bit whilst we were at it. That's just backing up now with the tractor. We're gonna go right to the back and then we can put the sprayer in front of it and everything will be put away then for the winter, which should be quite nice. Keep coming! Keep coming! Keep coming! That's it! If you've got a bow trailer and a cattle trailer, it's much more of me. Just clap them in, won't you? Yeah. That was a, a few words of wisdom from Dad because we keep we keep saying about swapping the bale trailers and the big cattle trailer, the big old beef bus, and then having a big bale trailer and then a big bale trailer with a D-mount body. So we go down to two rather than three, but obviously it's like it's money all the time, isn't it? It's just like a lot of expense. But we're dreaming here and that's the dream. One day maybe, if we're very lucky, that's what'll happen. We've got some straw shredder problems. We've got an issue with this where it keeps jumping the sprocket at the front. So it's driven hydraulically at the front and it drives this slatted floor. What you have to do is over time, as the chains wear, you lengthen it. But as you lengthen it, ridiculously, you can't actually get the slats to go round the end. So even though you've got loads of play on there, it won't go round. So we're now, even though we've had new chains on there a couple of years ago, we've now got to take a slat out and then cut two links out of the chain so it'll keep running. Probably. Well, we're praying that'll work, but we don't actually know whether it'll work or not. But if not, we'll just have to then get some new chains anyway. But we can't cope without it, so we've got to do something. It did it the other week and we put it back on because occasionally it does do it and then you'll just tighten it up. But then it's done it again this morning. We're just like, right, we need to do something about this now. So Dad's just gonna put this ratchet strap between two and miss a middle one out so that we can pull it tight. And then these are bolted on like a U-bolt from underneath. So we'll then unbolt it, cut two links off, bolt it back on, we're hoping. So it shouldn't be too much of a job as long as it goes to plan. You need about what is it four to six centimeters of play in here when you lift these up from the base. So it must be pretty tight. Even that seems a bit loose still. Yeah, I think we'll get more, yeah. a bit more yeah. still. So that's just done it up now. We're about halfway on that there, which is probably about where it should be to be honest. And we've got a nice gap here because what was happening before is it'd been pulled right back and then that just wouldn't go round. So it all runs quite smoothly now. So it's a lot better. I feel like we're just saying that we had new chains on it and we feel like last time we should have just took two links out of the chain and we wouldn't have had to add a load of new chains on it. It would have been a much cheaper job. But it runs well now. And actually, to be fair, it still runs because this is the one that's a bit tighter together. You can see there, it's closer than the next one. But if you had to do it again, if you just did it at the other end, it would be fine, wouldn't it? You wouldn't have to... Just do another slat. Different yeah, just slat. do a different slat and it would it'd run fine. No, right, that's good. Job done. Right, and that's me for another video. Oh, but look at this. Woo! Ooh, look at that beauty. We've had some trouble with it. We couldn't get it started, but Richard Johnson's been out and got it all working. Dad's been scraping up. So I'm, at some point, I'm gonna have to get the drone out and fly around it because it's a sweet piece of kit. Next week, there should be two videos coming out. One of which is gonna be the normal video because we're gonna be PDing. We've got some heifers to sort out, some replacement stabilizers and whatever else. So I wanna like just talk about that. I've had quite a few questions about replacement heifers and what I look for, whatever. So we'll talk about all that sort of stuff. We'll go over our PD results. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be good. A little bit nervous, not gonna lie. The other video, however, which will come out probably before that at some point during the week is gonna be my top five Christmas 
gifts for your farmery outdoor type person. You don't have to be a farmer for these. They're all practical presents. They are all sorts from like very good little stocking fillers right up to more expensive presents, but they are wicked stuff that I personally recommend. So with that in mind, have a great weekend. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in a bit. Ta-da!